Are we guys hearing each other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know. That's so cool, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say, but, you know. We don't know. We didn't know. We just grew up knowing that. And you see, you, when you have these little dark house and you're just, you know, peeping out, it's, peeping out, it's scary too. So you tend to believe what you hear. Um, when it was true, everybody was, somebody said everyone was afraid of him. <laughs> That's why we're not passing that side at all to go, you know, yeah. because we don't want to get stalked, whether it be true or not. But these were the <laughs> things that we, we, we heard and we learned about, you know. We have Mr. Um, one with the guitar. This, this will be our. This is. This will be our last uh, in that era because our show ain't even start yet. Oh, oh wow. my god! All right, so okay. we can move on. Let's move on. <laughs> cool. 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 Yes. So much thing we can talk about. But then I, I wouldn't, yeah, you know, some people who have real children alive now and grandchildren, yeah. we will try to spare them some yeah. of the painful <laughs> things True. that they, that that their parents, about. yes, was guilty of. We're going to spare some people. Yeah. We're going to put it in a book. Yes. We're going to okay. write it in a book. If you want to know, you will have to make a donation to the children's <laughs> fund. <laughs> Yeah, one of the things before we grew up from this is that our parents, especially my father, they grew us up on parables. So we know what parables meant than the actual telling us to do this. Because <laughs> they were telling you, it's not the same time Bush Kwa walked about Tam Yaratan. That's right. So when you think you get away with something, you don't know waiting for you. Or oh, what fly used to do before so Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wants to know what fly used to do before so he, he used to say, um, you never know where the breeze come from to blow up fall back. So, but he... <laughs> <laughs> and you're wondering what it is he talking about, but then when things happen, you say, Okay, you don't know where this come from, but so and so happen, you know. <laughs> I used it one day in a church. Um we were about to cook and the gas was out and oh we don't have any gas and i said well what fly used to do before so <laughs> and i stopped and i said mother where you get that from me you was taught something like you grew up with old people i said my father grew us up on parables he said what fly used to eat before anybody had a soul yeah. every mango tree or anything that is sour a fly used to be on but from the time you get that so food, you leave everything Thank you used to eat and go on the so. That's right. You get, you get <laughs> easier some. food. Yes. You get flesh. So, yes. You get the thing. Yeah, because anything you put down a fly will go on it. Anything. Yeah. Yes. Your fresh, fresh food, once it then fiery hot. <laughs> yeah. And if you look sharp, the, the fly so close, they get killed by the heat. But you're going on anything. True. A, a empty cup, an empty pan. <laughs> and when they land, they lay their eggs. Mm. They land just to lay their eggs. So you yeah. know what? It's fly plus fly pan. Fly yeah, pan. multiply yeah. by fly. So, peace <laughs> from God, my people. I know you guys will love to continue this. Yeah. But we are here today and um, <coughs> we fly looking for new trends for the eggs. <laughs> that what fly does look for. We're looking for new trends. We're looking for blood. We're looking for this and that. Yep. Like take for instance, I told my daughter that I saw flies, real flies, and all the flies' eyes was red. The whole fly was red. I said, "What? What on earth? The fly eat like the flies suck blood?" My daughter tell me last week. Yeah, uh, because it's a new week. Last week Tuesday, mommy, you know there is a place in Africa that have those flies, and they eat them, and they eat. And they drink blood, they suck blood. And she said it was what? The testy fly. Uh, and that fly does transmit sleeping sickness. Oh, wow. So and I, I saw them, I said, in, in a vision, I said, what? What, what kind of fly this? So Trinidad and Tobago, yeah, please don't sit back and invite everybody to come and settle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't know there is it. a fly that looks very red. And we don't know where that fly is coming from. Yeah. Watch out Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah. Watch out New York City. Watch out LA. Watch out world. Something else is about to happen. And it's, it's going to be a what? Plague. Plague. It's plague. 
it's a place. Someone put something on WhatsApp. They sent it out, and she said it's a vision she got, where she saw this black box with three tiny guys, and when they opened that box, this thing just came out of the box. But it I was don't just, listen to them people. Eh? You know what she was saying? People was just dropping yeah. like flies. You know, and you know, I'm it's telling you, another plague. The kind of fear. That, that mankind putting in mankind. Just now we don't even trust we own teeth in with mouth, you know. <laughs> Your bite with tongue. <laughs> yeah. God, that was a very scary thing. Yeah, yeah. That was a very scary thing. What? Even the flies, because remember, long ago they used to spray the planes with insecticides. Yeah. They don't spray planes anymore with that. Yeah, no time. So you know how easy we can get visited. Mm. By this insect, listen to me, and we may take it as a normal insect. Mm. We have to watch and pray. Amen. True. Pray every day. It's not that we wasn't praying. It's Management is putting up African, African sleeping sickness. sickness. Wow. It's a parasitic disease spread by My testes sickness. flies. Look at that. Wow. Thank you so much, management. Information. Your eyes open. Bring us back. We have to open our eyes. We have to watch out. Look at the flies. My gosh. The human African. But the eyes were more bulging. The eyes was like setting like uh, like it is a diamond shaping outwards. That, mm. That's the eye that I saw. Thank you. Wow. Look at what it does. But the reality is strange. But in reality, the new tools will help to diagnose. Okay, good. Rapid diagnosis. No refrigerator, no instruments. We have to. This is so. When I was so when I was small, country as Trinidad and Tobago, we have to wait until something hit before we before we can do something. We have to live in preparedness. We, we have to know that the same way we're busy all around the world mm -hmm. is the same way things can visit us very busily. True. In a hustle, very fast. So may the peace of God, which surpasses all human intelligence today, will teach our governments that we have to live in preparedness. Amen. We have to get ready for the things of the world. Things yeah. that seem the same way we want to get along with our practices, Year after year, elections after elections, remember God promised to visit us and our generation Christian. if we choose not to remember him. So, Mother Lystra, can we read Hosea? The See, text that Hosea my, daughter, my daughter sent that for me last night. And I said to myself, what would she send this to me for? And suddenly I recognized is everyone that I speak to minutes before a show, like some people that's been talking to me, I will call them. And everything that day, and we talk about before the show, it is my show. <laughs> yes, Cassie. Cassie is saying I talk parables with my eyes. You, yes. <laughs> yeah, because each eye, if, every time I give them an eye, they know exactly what it means. And I learned that from my father. One is to, I learned that one at is my to nose. Up, one is to go outside. One is to go and sleep. So, yes. <laughs> I learned how to do this from my mother. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see that nose weak? And you know what it means. You know if you're on the road and she do you that? Try go home and start to clean up or, 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 or cook something or do something. <laughs> something is coming. <laughs> to prevent your cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you're getting in her. It's true. Mm -hmm. And a silence. <laughs> yeah, he says. No words. So peace this morning. Thank you. Avanel and everyone, we're glad that you guys are into it. And I'm, I'm proud Yes. to know that we can have a show that speaks to community, about community, and for communities. Amen. And when we speak this, we want <clears throat> those in governance to know. But we are speaking it because we don't like how it is going right now. And I'm inviting people to call in to share your quick memory. Mm -hmm. When you come on, you ain't going to start to talk, Papa tell you when you want. 
come in with one that we could have it. And to all those who will be inclined to give a chapter in the great book that we are about to get ready, I'm serious. I, I don't talk things because of the wind. I talk things so that the wind can take it around the world. Where the wind listed, it blew it. Okay. So let us read from the great book, Chaplin Evangelist Lister Wright. Here we are reading from the book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6. It said, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. And this is God who's speaking to the priest, uh, according to my, my reading. He said, my people, he called all of us his people because we are God's children. But he was directing this to the priest. He said to them, because the priest had failed to teach the word of God to his people. So because they had failed to do their job that would have enlightened the people, give them the knowledge to know how they ought to live, he says to them, because you have rejected knowledge, I will reject thee. And the punishment in kind for the law of God is because these priests not doing their job, he would punish them and even his, their children. So it's telling us that when we have a responsibility from God, not man, he's looking forward, he's expecting us to be accountable. And accountability is what is necessary with the word of God when you have to look over the flock. They didn't do it. So he's telling them here, and I know it's going to be a message for the churches as it came forth, Mama Coco. He it says it's a law that which the priest should have been faithfully promoting. Yes. In, 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 instead of promoting the knowledge of God to the children, that they would be wise and not be carried away by every wind of doctrine, neither would they have to sit and be, you know, listen to wolves in sheep clothing. Hello. They had to do that. They were only in their own business. So he said, this is what I'm going to do to you because you failed to teach God's word to the people. So it's like a rejected knowledge because you got it, but you didn't give it to them. So the, the people did not really reject it. They cannot reject something that was not given. So he says, this is what I'm going to do because the priest should have been faithfully promoting the word of God to his people. This is what this verse is saying, Mama so, Coco. Yes, and this verse now will lead you to, 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 to speak a little. Your knowledge about the church, but I think that's a question coming up. So we're going to leave it there until we get there. And I know that you will have more time to recognize that going to a place, you're calling it a church, but he's my spiritual father. Is he really your spiritual father? Oh, is no, he man. really is a father? Is he preaching? Is he teaching? Is he enlightening? Is he telling you what and who a father is and who father we should be? Speaking man. about and living according to the word. Yeah. Listen, having served as a church treasurer for a long time, what is the role of the church in her times? I believe I, I served as a, a treasurer, but before that, I sat on the board in That's churches. And one of the things that the board would have done in hard times, they would seek those that are in need at the time. People might have lost their job, but they were faithful in tidings. So you don't have to let them ask you for something because this is what the church is about. You could have them pay a bill, or take them to the supermarket and make the grocery. But make sure you take care of them. But they don't do that when in, in hard times. 
you know, they will tell you we got to pay money for this and bring money for that. And so much secular activities in the churches, oh, you know, like it's an organization, yes, but so <laughs> much secular activities where the, the subject is money. Hmm. Okay, we, we want building fund, but the building is not yours for you to fix. So why are you collecting building fund? Hey. Okay, you want to build your own church, but you don't have a foundation, you don't have a piece of property to put a church on. So these are just things, and they believe that some people are blind and they don't understand. And some of these people, they, they're worshiping the pastors. Hey, you, sir. Pastors present themselves as God, or they are the go between between you and God. I, I am the one in the middle. So some of them rely on them and believe what they are telling them. And hence the reason they will put the money in here for this, put the money in there for that. And one of my big questions is, you're promoting all these things to, to milk the poor and those that are in need. But the very word of God that they're supposed to stand on, build on, and let the word become their life, you are not promoting it as much. As a matter of fact, you're not even promoting it at all. So many people are in church, but they are not in Christ. Hey, They just show up. I went to church today and I had a good time in church. But you didn't have a good time in the Lord. You just went and had some bodily exercise that profit you nothing. Hmm. So now in the COVID now, I'm seeing where some churches are helping. Some not hearing from church at all. You're not paying a rent. You're not paying for the lights. You're not paying for the water. But you're going to contact the, 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 the saints and tell them, well, the church have a Zell account. You can send your tithes. Are you kidding me? I bind hmm. that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. How can you have a Zell account to receive tithes? I've sat and I've noticed the pastor would preach, can a man rob God? Yes. Malachi 3 in his tithes and offering. And the pastors are working, but they're not paying their tithes. Hey. So you're robbing God and you lead by example. However, you're not putting your hands in the pocket to pay your tithes. But you're telling them, can a man rob God? Yes, in tithes and all, according to Malachi 3. But to my understanding in Malachi 3, back in the days, there were no set of single churches. It's a big temple. And when you till the land, whatever it is, whether it's eggs or whether it's chicken or your first fruit, you bring all of that you reap into that temple into the storehouse and those who do not have they would get from there to go back home if it's too much for you to travel with then you may sell it and bring in the money but it was not for the place or the priest to expedite it amongst those that who did not have now churches are opening up in every corner every because corner money and then they're telling you about money for this and money for that and you must pay your tithes i must die I must stay black and die. I don't must pay anything into something that you're not seeing a growth. That's you can't sad. be taking money for this. And when you look in the roof, it's leaking. But you're collecting tithes. What are you doing with it? You're sending your kids off to college. And this person can't even buy clothes to them trying to go to school. So it's a, it's a trade. It's a compromise. And a lot of churches are sold out. Mm. They sold out, and I'm going to break that down. If if I could give you a little thing on the side, I could bring this, and I would give it to you. You you know you 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 like me. You care what sin I commit? You don't know if my money come from murdering. You don't care if it came from drugs. As long as I'm bringing it in for you, you would close your eye and allow a lot of things to go by. And if God has placed you there. Who he has anointed, he appointed, and he equipped. And he gave you a charge. Peter, lovest thou me? Yeah, Lord, feed my sheep. Hello, sir. You're feeding the sheep. You're, you're, you're grabbing this and you want that. And the person doing all the wrong, but you allow it to pass. You compromise it because mm -hmm. you're greasing my hand. But if the Lord is all our shepherd, especially a pastor or a minister, and I am not making any apologies for the word of God when I speak it. The Lord is all our shepherd. 
And if he has given you the authority to open a church and you are doing so, he would make sure that church is being taken care of in all its needs. And Hello. if the congregation choose to bless you for your hard work as saying, thanks, I appreciate you, that is fine. But don't demand it and people could be living all kind of life. You're letting that bypass. You're not, you. teaching, you're not preaching morality. You're not preaching the, the division. Yes. So many discord in the house of God. And everything else. So it, it, this thing here, churches need transparency. No transparency in the church. If there is transparency, people don't have to question my money where is it going to what are they really doing with it no transparency in the house of god and they will tell you we have it and it's not so if the church is just a means to an end for many hey. bringing the money it is and they they don't even want to have a meeting for you to to know well what's going on a lot of churches cut out um board meetings you know it's not it's none of your business you know I can't trust anybody and I can't tell no, you that no right it doesn't, you know, but no pastors need to be on a board. Hey, you have a body of Christ in the church and this is the treasurer, this is the president and whatever you discuss and you take it to the pastor. The funds, this is what we have. This was allocated for this. This was this for that. And this is our balances. And this, this is what should be done. When you start to dibble and dabble in that, and there is no accountability. This is what is dividing and breaking up churches. Shut your soul. My sister is saying um, they have selective services because so they much. preach. They preach some sermons, but it's not of God. Because when God gives you a word, Hello. He gives you a word that He gonna touch somebody who has been crying out to me. I want to answer them in the word I am giving you. So you must seek me so I will tell you what my people want to hear. <laughs> I went into fasting to ask God, what is the reason why the, the ministers are falling from grace? Churches are being divided and separated. And I, I, I asked the question and I just kind of went back in prayer and dozed off. And he said to me, when he had called them out to become pastors and leaders, they seek him diligently to know how to grow the ministry. What to preach. And they were very obedient. But they came to a place where they think that they have arrived. Hallelujah. And they didn't need him anymore. So they start seeking his face for instruction, for guidance, and begin to do their own thing. Hmm. But if, unless the Lord build a house, he labored in vain that built it. Built. And except the Lord keep it the city, the watchman, watchman. waited but in vain. Hey, so he's not there. So how can you grow? This church is not going to go anywhere because you have thrown me out. I'm no longer in there because you're not seeking me to know what to say to my people. That's why a lot of people are leaving churches. Because the things that is allowed in the house of God is just like the ones that is outside. They only call it church. So he's saying, you know what? Why am I in here? When it's the same thing that goes on outside there. Let me stay out there. The church is known as a hospital. And when people come in there, broken, busted, and disgusted, but you're so blind like Bartimaeus, you cannot even see what's going on with these people. So that you could even pray with them. Oh, sister dear, what's going on in your life? So they come in dry and they go back out dry. Yeah. So many people, they don't want to see the church doors. Mm -hmm. And it's a shame. Hey, you sir. They're not preaching repentance. They're not preaching forgiveness. And when I go in there with my bold self and be care, begin to speak the word of God, which is always truth. You know the persecution and the trials, but I don't care. I pledge allegiance to the Lamb of God. I didn't pledge, pledge allegiance to man. And I have a covenant. According to thy gracious word, in meek humility, this will I do, my thy Lord, I must remember thee. 
So I make up my mind that yeah, they might not. Be like Stephen, but I have a charge. Thus saith the Lord. The Lord. Whether you're here or you're phobia. Too much things, too much secular activities, and you're jumping up. And no, they bring it in. There's a paganism. Practicing pagan rituals in the churches and calling it godly. The Jezebel spirit is so much alive in the churches. Hey. The immorality, sexual immorality, idolatry. Jezebel is dead, but her spirit is so much alive in the churches today. Hey. And we know what happened because the word of God speaks in Revelation chapter 2. That he, you know, he gave her time to repent. And she did not. But her children that she allowed to happen, he would kill them with death. So we have to be careful of these spirits that are in the church that, you know, we're encouraging these things to happen and people are not being taught how to really serve God, how to, to, to commit their ways. He said, but, but Jesus said, if you, if you deny me, I will deny you before my father. So anyone who is not seeking him, Anyone that is not for Christ, they are anti-Christ. Many people waiting for one person as the antichrist. But as long as you are against, because anti mean against. Anytime you are against God or the word of God, you are an antichrist. Amen. Well, Amen. well, well. Hallelujah. Cool. Let us Amen. bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Father, into thy hands we commend our spirit. Praise our spirit, God. our mind, our soul, our bodies, and our strength. Because Hallelujah. our strength cometh from your joy. And yes. if we're claiming that we're strong right now, we have to receive your joy. And Hallelujah. the joy that you share with us, we are not going to lose it. For Hallelujah. the joy that man has and man can give, anyone can take that it's joy. Away. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. Praise and he God. promised us today that when he gives us our strength, which is his joy, no man. Man can take it. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Church need to do something. Said out of the mouth of babes, he said, I will ordain strength. And today we are listening to young mother Lystra. She ain't all that young, but she young to all those doctrine that we're receiving. Because the doctrine they're receiving are all doctrine that people not ready to expound in the right way. In the we church, liars in the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hey. So can you search uh, search within yourself today and to tell us what you believe people should do when it comes to money that they receive in churches? Many church, different churches have a different agenda. Some church really needs the money. You could see what they're doing with it. They're doing outreach. They might be doing food, food banks and these different things. They're taking care of the needs. That's what we need to do. Church needs to take care of the needs of the saints. You don't even have to be a member of the church. But we, there's a need. The cries out there, you take care of it. And as I said before, there must be a board that would convene. There's a need, there's a cry in Macedonia. This is what they need. We are going to come together with my partner with another church, and we're going to make sure that they receive this. Someone Let's, is on the line. Let's welcome Anne. Hi, Anne. Hello. So, hello. Who is this? Hello, Anne. Is Anne there? No. If we're not getting on, we will move straight into Lindy. Kalisha, you will talk again of concern. Hello? Yes, yes I am here. Yes. Good afternoon, Mama Coco and your guests. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm calling from Florida. Welcome, Florida. It's, it's, it's very nice. Um, You know, you have blessed my courage today um go ahead and okay i'm listening to i think it's um mother mother Lister. yes um, 
she looks very familiar. I, I don't know if she lives in New York because I'm, you know, originally from New York. And um, I'm listening to her and she has actually lifted my spirit because it's like I'm hearing myself. It's like I'm hearing myself. And a lot of the things that she's saying, these are some of my concerns. These are some of the things that I speak about, you know, when I'm having conversations with people. As a matter of fact, I have left the church. I was ordained um, uh, Easter Sunday, 1996. I was ordained as an evangelist. I was active in the ministry. But what has happened over the years within our faith, it has just, you know, I, I've, just, I've just walked away. I don't go to church anymore because um, a lot of the things that you have said, that is what has happened is today. The churches have lost their purposes. Mm -hmm. um, this morning I was telling a young lady, I don't see why they're having anniversaries every year. Just to say that we have an anniversary uh, our doors are opened. There are no baptisms. Hmm. And there are no, you know, progress in the, in the church without baptism is like a barren fig tree. Oh, grace. Hallelujah. As you say, immorality. Uh, uh, no one is preaching about sin anymore. And um, the days when I used to be on the field, I was a judgment preacher. Ah. I apologize for the gospel. Jesus. But it has been brought so low that I really don't go to church anymore. I mean, I have been raised in the church all of my life. I was Catholic when I was in Pentecostal. I came in the Baptist faith at the age of 17. That's 49 years ago. Ooh. I had a healing ministry. I kept the Saturday Sabbath. I you know, I went through all of the rituals of the Baptist faith, but I loved, what I loved the most was my preaching ministry. I've been on the field over the years when I was much younger. Mm -hmm. but it's really what happened within our faith, and I want to say about our faith because I spent 49 years in the Baptist faith. Oh. It's to go uh, uh, run after titles. So it became about titles. Oh. And um, no fasting, the visitation of the sick, um, the ministry works, you know, what Christ commanded us to do. A lot of them have pushed that aside and the church becomes like a, like a social club. So yes. I don't go to church anymore. I just said that did. I told someone just this morning that I've like, given away all my clothes. I don't care about those things. And I've been to Bible school, been to all of those stuff over the years. And, um, but my spirit, I've gotten to the point now where I say, the heck with it, I stay in my house, I listen to the radio. Mm -hmm. You have blessed my spirit today just listening to you because it's like hearing myself <laughs> speak, you know. And um, I often say, and this is my favorite um, thing, that Ichabod is written in bold letters in some of the churches. And because they have no spirit of discernment, they are just functioning because it's something that you know how to do. But the spirit of God has long left some of these churches. Thank you so oh, much. Thank, thank you. you so much, my sister. We are blessing still. Don't give up. Don't let go of everything. Because remember, you have a charge to keep yourself and a God to glorify yourself and a never dying soul to save, which will be fitted for the sky. Mother Lisha want to say something to you. Mother, um, you know who knows me, Mother Coco? She was in your program and um, Pastor Wendy Mitchell. Yes. Uh, she, she know, we know each other from the days when I was, you know, vibrant on the field as an evangelist. But what happened to, um, as people began acquiring these names, names that I don't even know where they got some of these names from. <laughs> that is what we talk about all the time on my show. They push the preachers aside, so you have to be a, an, an arch abyss and an arch this, and you know that's what has happened to this life. Mother, this Mother life. Superior and Mother this and Thank you so much. We we have um we 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 have heard you and Mother Lisa is going to respond to you right now. Um, you know, grace, grace, peace, and mercy be unto you. I'm not sure if I remember you, 
but I want to encourage you because all that you said there, I put my clothes in a suitcase, I abandoned it, and I went into a Pentecostal church. And it's not the building, it's not the church. When you have a charge with God, he anointed you and appointed you. Jeremiah chapter 4, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse, one, verse 4. Oh, yes, verse five. He said, "Before I, I knew, knew thee, he said, before I formed thee in thy mother's womb, I knew thee, and before thou camest out, I have ordained you a prophet amongst nations." You have to know who and whose you are, what you are called to do by God, not by man, because the things that God sent you out there to do, many would not want to hear you because they are rejecting the word of God. And the Holy Spirit that works in you is the spirit of truth. truth. It comes to lead and guide us in all truth. And your truth will not resonate with churches, but you are accountable to spread his word, thus saith the Lord. I am an evangelist. And I used to be out on the highways and the byways ministering. And when the Holy Spirit wakes me up three o'clock in the morning and tell me, go up on Utica Avenue to the subway. He doesn't even tell me what to say. But when I got there, my mouth opened. And I'm telling you, it's some prevention and cure that will take place. The church is not the building. The tabernacle of God is within man. You are the church, my hey. sister. And you have to clothe yourself with on the whole armor of God. And you follow the principles of the fruit of the spirit. It's not different fruits. All these things that we are playing, the nine is one fruit. Well, I could come in on the sister's behalf. I believe she's following, she following the call and the fruit of the spirit. Because if she could be on this life today and could be moved by you, she is still there. She has it. And what we're going to do is to tell her that she has a charge to keep. Yes. And the God to glorify is not everybody God. Is the God that you believe in and the God that strengthens you and the God that anoint you and appoint you. When you receive an appointment from God, Amen. nobody behavior. Let me tell people something, people on this live here today. If I had followed how I felt when people start to persecute me, hmm. when my daughter going to school in Dallas, Florida and they tell you, she, your mommy did on there, she come here, and your mommy, I walk over there. Me never bed nobody in my life. <laughs> I have never seen a woman nakedness in my life. One day, a woman, I told her what to do, and she did it. But she went and she had sex, and she pushed whatever was placed in her further up, and she couldn't find it. It lost. It lost because she did not obey the rule. Amen. She was plugged with a ball of cotton with medicine for the cervix and for the area by her vulva. And she knew she had it in, but she didn't want her husband to know that she trying to heal her body from inflammation. And she went and she had sex. But she come back crying to me. She can't, she can't find the thing where they put in her shit. <laughs> you went by Matron. Matron did your stuff with you. You get the rules. And even though no one told you should know better. Where is your wisdom? Should know better. I said, lady, you have to go the same way you just use your tampon. If the string lasts, put your honey in there Push and down. pull wherever you have in there out, or you have to go to a doctor or go back down Mount Thomas. You have to know what you are up to. And if you've been blessed and anointed by God Go and appointed by the Holy Spirit of truth, which is here as Mother Lister just in sight <laughs> to guide us throughout all truth, I pray for you today. Yeah. And Mother Lister is going to pray now because we have more people on the call. Pray that you get your satisfaction and release yourself. You see, none but ourselves can free our minds. Amen. Don't look at what the church is doing. They have to pay. They have to pay. Praise God. So goodbye, my sister. Keep listening to the live. Mother Lister is about to pray for you. 
Thank Almighty you. Almighty God, everlasting Father, as we are in your presence, dear God, you see we're two and three are gathered. You're in the midst, touching anything concerning you. You're in the midst and to bless. You are to bless. Father, in the name of Jesus, remember your servant daughter that you have called it for duty. I pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, all the sadness, the hurt, and the pain that she has given up. Let her remember that you have not given up on her. And there is a charge that she has to keep. Hello, she Jesus. has an accountability before you, oh God, because you have anointed and appointed her for every good work. Father, in the name of Jesus, let her not be weary of well-doing. Help her to persevere unto all the trials and the tribulation. Help her to forgive those that have trespassed against her because her life is hid in you that as you sit at the right hand of the Father, that you are looking down upon every work that she has done Hello. and is about to do. I pray, oh God, she takes up a charge right now and continue to do against the naysayers because we are promising your word that many would persecute us for righteousness. Day. We would face trials and tribulation. But it says, even in your trials and your tribulation, do not forget about me to stand firm. You said to Joshua, be strong and courageous. courageous. For I, the Lord, thy God, would be with you even unto the end of time. So this evening, dear sister, and I pray God, God will just open up your, your, your eyes and, and allow you to understand that I, the Lord, thy God, will be with you, my child, even until the end of time. Be not afraid of their faces. He said to Ezekiel, I sent you to a nation that you knew not. not their face is hard like flint. Their necks are stiff. He said, do not look at their faces, but I want you to preach my word thus, said the Lord. The Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you receive it, my sister. You know, remember. Jesus. You remember, my dear sister, as I close with you, there is a name for people like you. There is a story. Who are these? Get your clothes ready, sister. Who are these that dress in white robes? I'm a shaky man. Shut up. These are they that come, come on, preach, sister. Preach. Preach. They have washed their robes and have made them white in the blood of the Lamb. These are theirs that came out of great tribulation. tribulation and has washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Pick up your, your, your chart. Pick up your Pick thing. up your chart. Go Pick up what you it. know. I suffered many of that. I was on a bed of affliction. I was making my will and preparation to die for who didn't know. I was, I came to nothing on my bed. But he raised me up that I must continue to do what he has begun in me. Because he said, whatever good work he has begun in you, he's able to complete it. He's going to finish it. And he raised me up that I can walk on mountains. He raised me up to walk on stormy seas. And I'm stronger when I'm his on his shoulder. For he raised me up to be more than I can. And he does that to you to this evening. You know, we need, we need warriors. We need ambassadors for Christ out there to spread the good tidings, the good news that the kingdom of the Lord God has come. Because when Jesus began his ministry, praise God, he didn't preach about money and tithes. From the time he began, he said, the kingdom of the Lord. You had prepared for the kingdom of the, the coming of the kingdom of God. One of the first acts that Jesus performed to show that money will be a disastrous. In the temple, man. He went into that temple. He didn't call them lovers. He didn't call them friends. He didn't say, you guys opening up a bank and this is nice. He said, you are, in a, you, are, you are in a den with thieves and vagabonds. And he tossed the tables over. Amen. Toss what you believe in over right now. Don't let fear take you out. We are more than conquerors in Christ. Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lindy, we have a question for you. <laughs> As you know, this is Labor Day weekend, which is a celebration of West Indian heritage in New York City, eh? How did you guys celebrate before? And how are you 
celebrating in 2020. Wow. You see, God did something that uh, if we have the time, I will explore. But go ahead, answer your question. Well, um, Labor Day in New York is a carnival festivity. Well, let me put it like that. And um, when I came to New York, I went to the park we, um, the first year. And I just went up there and I spent exactly like 10 to 15 minutes that within the time to get to the house and from the park. <laughs> and I was up there and when the shut turned around, she said, wait, what happened? I said, up here is not for me because it was just too much. But however, in, um, in my home, we used to have um, a Labor Day celebration with my husband used to say, it's his harvest. It's his way of giving back. So he will have, a, a lot of people used to come to our house in the backyard and we will cook everything imaginable and it still <laughs> was never enough. <laughs> and we will just feed because sometimes people will call and say, what do you have to bring on what? He said, I don't want anybody to bring anything. Just come. <laughs> and we have done that for many years. So many people in and out, back and forth. And um, um, a lot from all over. I remember a, a, a couple came from Canada with a friend. And they were just passing through. And they ate and they went to the backyard and they were having fun. And then eventually they told their friend, well, I'm not moving from here. You know? We're not moving from here. We're staying right here. He said, well, we have other places to go. He said, well... No, listen, they don't know the place. They said, but you could go because we feel welcome. We feel at home right hey. here. People have us feel so homely the first time we've seen them. But, you know, it was open for anybody. Come in and enjoy yourself. Feel free. And they start coming back every year to our home just from that one encounter. And, um, well, certain things took place and we decided that we are not going to have those kind of festivities anymore. Um, there was time to give it up. Uh, my husband is a very, very ardent believer in the word of God. And he was at the time, but, you know, there comes a time, there's a time for everything. And he, we decided that this was it. We're not going to have it anymore. Some people came after that year looking for us and they were very disappointed, but we had to do what we have to do. And we have never had anything like that before. Um, we never had anything like that again. So right now it's just like, serving and seeking and glorifying god that's what we are trying to concentrate on more so now because the time for the festivity is over it's a different time of season. it's a different season now so we don't indulge in the in the labor day activities for like how much years now maybe about six years or maybe about six or seven years now wow. yeah time flies so fast but it was good while it lasted, but we have to move on to other things. How grateful was most of the people? Well, that's a different topic, I think, a different <laughs> story. Because you know what? I, I have always realized when you can give of yourself, of your home, because there were times a lot of people will come to a home. and um, Come to and your home to even, visit or to live. And even stay. Stay around. And, and you know, what? I remember a time I used to share at least 14 plates of food one time. And these are just people who have been calling and can I come and, you know, visit. But from the time you are not um, doing certain things again, you don't see them. You don't hear them. But my husband also said, I do not give anybody anything so that they could give me back something in return. Whatever I give, I give from my heart. I am hopeful that they will give somebody else. But sometimes just to even give a call and say, how are you doing? You know, how is this mm. for you this time? You know. You don't really get much of that. 